بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد. Continuing on in our study, we reached a portion of the text where the Sheikh said uh, began to define for us what it means predecessor. What is the definition of salaf of what when we turn when we refer to that we say uh, we follow the salaf or we follow the minhaj of the salaf or we follow the minhaj of uh, the salaf asadi or we follow the salaf asadi so we have to have a, a this is very important for us to gain an understanding of this because many people they decry and they implore that they and, and claim that they follow the salaf of this ummah they say or I'm salafi however many of them don't really understand what that means so it's very important for us to have a correct understanding when it says that you follow the Salaf. Does that mean you're following a, a group of brothers or a group of sisters in a particular locality? Or, you know, is it sufficient just to say you're Salafi or to say that you follow the Salaf or to say you follow the Minhaj of the Salaf? Is that sufficient? Well, the, uh, of course, the answer to that is no. And one Qaida which comes to mind or a principle which comes to mind is the Qaida... Uh, from the ulama, <coughs> the ulama of fiqh, that it's a, it's a, 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 a principle which comes from qawaid uh, uh, fiqhia or, or actually a, a, a sul of fiqh or however you want to classify it, that it is a fiqh principle which is also applicable in aqidah. And the principle is al ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musamiyat that the proof or the reality of something is in its uh, substance, not in its name. So just so we have an understanding of what that means, because often we have, uh, you know, it helps for us to have illustrations and, uh, and, and, and to understand. So here, for the sake of demonstration and because I'm thirsty, we have a pitcher of water. I pour this water in the glass, in the cup. Bismillah. That is water, as we perhaps you were able to see. If I were to then go and name that pitcher of water or fluid and say, no, that is, I'll call it perfume, or I will call it uh, Kool Aid, or I'll call it Vimto, or I'll call it whatever's famous uh, in your locality, we'll, we'll give it another name. That does not change the substance of that. And I think that's clear. It doesn't require a excessive explanation. Likewise, a person who says, I'm from Ahl Sunnah Tiwul Jama'ah, or they say they're, they follow the Salaf, or they say they follow the Minhaj of Ahl Sunnah, or the Minhaj of the Salaf of Saleh, or what have you, that regardless of their claim, the reality is in their creed, in their Aqidah. And the reality is in their Minhaj, in their methodology of practicing Islam, in their methodology and Minhaj of giving Dawah. And the reality is in their suluk and manners, in their manners. Do they follow the Salaf in their manners? Are they attempting to, uh, are they attempting to avoid sin? So all of these things are a part of proving whether someone uh, uh, is Salafi or not, or whether they truly, uh, they truly exemplify those esteemed characteristics of the Salaf that the Salaf had. So going back to the text. The definition of salaf. Salaf, it refers linguistic, it refers to those who preceded. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al kareem, falamma uh, asafuna intaqamna minhum fa agraqna hum ajma'in fa ja'alna hum salafin wa mithalan lil akhirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so when they enraged us, we punished them and drowned them all and we made them a precedent. So this was the term salafin. salafa, And we made them a precedent. Or a, and, and this refers to making them a lesson for those who came after them. And an example to later generations. So this shows us uh, Fir'aun. That he was an example because we refer to him uh, referred to Fir'aun as a lesson uh, of tyranny, as a lesson to what happens to tyrants in the end. 
For example, we hope that this happens to Bashar al-Assad and other tyrants that exist in our time, that they will be an example for those later, and even in this life we hope to see his fall and his destruction, and that he will be an example for humanity to see, that this is what happens to wicked evildoers who destroy and cause facade in the, in, in, uh, in the lands, who kill and destroy and oppress and cause harm to Ahl Sunnah and to humans in general, that they are an example. They are an example, uh, and, and, and their destruction is an example to what happens to tyranny and tyrants. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made them a precedence, an example to later generations who engage in those same actions, that they will have to face the same consequence, that they might be warned and also advise others. So uh, this is one of the means of predecessor. He then mentions another meaning of the predecessor is those who have proceeded amongst uh, your forefathers and relatives who were older than you in age and favor. This is why the Prophet Wasallam's companions, the Sahaba Radiallahu their successors, the Tabi'un, are referred to the pious predecessors. So this as a term, as in uh, we a technical term, istirahin, we refer to the pious predecessors. The Salaf refers to the Salaf uh, refers to the the uh, Sahaba, the Tabi'een, what Tabi'a Tabi'een, those first three generations of Muslims. We refer to them as the Salaf al Salih. And as we, we're about to get into, we'll explain this, we'll let the Sheikh explain this for us. When the word predecessor, I mean, Salaf, when used generally by the scholars who teach and write about issues concerning creed, their definition centers around the Prophet ﷺ's companions, or the Prophet's companion and their successors, the Tabi'een, as well as those who succeeded them. The most honored generations of Muslim amongst the great Imams, known for their proficiency and leadership, their complete obedience to the Sunnah, and their abstinence from innovations and warning against it, the scholars of the Muslim nation have agreed on their proficiency and leadership in the religion. This is why the people of the first century of the Islamic Hijra are called the pious predecessors. So with this, that means in a general sense also we refer to our Salaf. So we could say Ibn Taymiyyah, for example, who's much later, who uh, I believe uh, died around the 12th century, much later, we refer to him as our Salaf. He's our immediate Salaf. Uh, that he, he died, uh, you know, much later than those great Imams, the great Imams of, of the Salaf al-Saleh. But when we refer to Salaf al-Saleh specifically, that is referring to the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, what it's about Tabi'een, those first three generations. Then in a general sense, we refer to the Salaf as those who followed them in righteousness who came after them, who preceded us. And in this regard, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is talking about the fadl and the righteousness and the precedence.